In this video, we're going to talk about Clarence from start to finish. And we're also going to answer some questions like, does Clarence have a dead brother? Who is his father? Why doesn't Regis Gilbin moo? Who is this bad guy balance? And what is the actual ending of the cartoon? Who is the Wendell family? Mary is the main member of the Wendell family. She was a happy kid just like every other kid, and she had this puppet that looks like Curious George and a dog called Milo. When she was in high school, she had braces and worked as a servant at a fast food restaurant. After graduating, she dated this guy and the father of her kids that she met at the prom. Mary had a typical childhood and teenagehood, yet she had trauma caused by her mom who tried to control her and criticize her for everything. So once she got with that guy, she moved out. Now we get to the important part, where she had two kids with this man. One called Clarence, and the other is supposed to be Jeremy, but unfortunately, Mary lost Jeremy when he was seven months old due to an unknown accident. Jeremy was rarely mentioned in the show, but there was evidence he existed, and we'll talk more about this later. Now let's get back to the family. It's clear that they have been affected by this loss. Hence, her relationship with Clarence's father broke off, who blamed her apparently. Throughout the whole show, he was never shown except for once when he was at the prom wearing a bow tie in a torn picture. Mary wanted to remove every memory of him and focus on taking care of Clarence. Despite her trauma, Mary was the perfect mom to Clarence. She photographed everything about him and made sure he had a good childhood, then she got together with Damien Dawson. However, she was scared of developing their relationship out of fear that he would be a womanizer. After that, Mary met a man called Chad at one of his parties. Their relationship was successful because Mary was a person who helped, took care of, and validated others. And Chad needed help to feel confident and mature enough which is what Mary got with him. Chad worked as a clown, and although he was just like a child, he valued Mary and made her feel her feminine energy. While time was passing by, Mary felt secure with Chad and her relationship with Chad, although Clarence wasn't comfortable around him at first. Mary and Clarence moved in with Chad, and he joined a new school and started a new adventure with his friends. His crazy adventure starts on the first day of school when Miss Baker introduced him to his classmates, and he invited his friends to a sleepover. He was expecting them to come over, but no one did. Mary noticed that and promised to do a sleepover party with him to lift his mood. Fortunately, Jeff and Sumo accepted his invitation. However, Jeff wanted to watch documentaries only, but Sumo got along with Clarence right away despite coming late. So they tried to make Jeff enjoy his time rather than watch TV, and they all ended up breaking the pinata, getting stung by bees, and skin rashes and having fun, and ever since that day, they were best friends. The funny part about the show is that the adventures are realistic and remind us of our childhood memories when we used our imagination and did dumb stuff just like Clarence, so I highly recommend this show. The stupid things the trio did got them suspended from school a few times. Although Jeff is relatively smarter, he always gets in trouble with them. The three of them have unique personalities that add up to the show and make their adventures more fun. Especially Clarence, who, by the way, is the main character. He's innocent, dumb, and childish more than the others. Clarence once ate from the garbage. Oh, and the time he ate 500 eggs to challenge Belson. Now, let's talk about Jeff. He's a healthy and complicated kid, he adopts a healthy lifestyle and cares for his studies, but still loses control sometimes and becomes violent and jealous. One day, Clarence took his french fries and he got violent. He also felt jealous when Clarence got a girlfriend that he wanted. See, Jeff feels superior to his peers because he believes he's smarter than them, but he still got the chance to open up to the world and prove that he could be a good and fun friend. Now let's talk about Sumo. He lives in a relatively poor environment compared to his friends because of his dad Mel and his mom Tanona, who reproduce like rabbits without thinking of the future. But they stop eventually because they simply can't afford any more kids. They had seven kids, and Sumo was the third child. They all live in a van surrounded by garbage and share the same bed. But despite all of this, his friends still treat him well. Although his childhood is sad, he never stops using his imagination to enjoy his time, like when he makes toys using garbage. Struggling financially and emotionally affected his behavior which was clear through his messy actions. He also felt sexually attracted to females, although he was only nine years old. His family is far from perfect, but his dad tries his best to put food on the table. And when he can't, he goes fishing so that he can feed his kids. His mom takes care of all of her kids. 
even the grown-up ones. Now let's talk about Gilbin, obviously the weirdest character who has superpowers. In one scene, Jeff pushed him because he ate his board stars, so he became handicapped and developed teleporting skills, which is why he appears and disappears out of nowhere throughout the show. His power shows up clearly when him and Jeff fought because he took the spotlight from Jeff on his birthday in the Big Petey Pizza Problem episode. It was here where his power showed while defending himself. Now let's focus on the three kids and their school that has weird students. One of them is the giant girl with the manly voice. I don't know, Clarence made it sound so cool. Chelsea, the smartest and toughest. Percy, the always terrified kid and the duck looking twin. The weird kid with the hanging cheek. Kimby, the shy one who is always adjusting her hair. And Belson, the one who brags about being wealthy and leader material. His issues might seem superficial, but he is actually hateful, arrogant, and a terrible son. His attitude is because of his dad who left him and his mom who gave him everything because she feels guilty. And now we get to the most important part of the cartoon. Clarence has tendencies to explore supernatural stuff like the puppets that control their owners so that they become their only friends, the neighbors who look like humans, the talking dogs that appear out of nowhere, the boxes that curse those who open them, and the mouse man that lives in the nursing home. These cases make Aberdale, the town where he lives, interesting and worrying all at once. In fact, there's a story that suggests there was a baby called Lunas and was lost in Aberdale Woods, but was never found. People claim that they hear his screams coming out of the woods. Lunas was looking for someone to play with, but he got lost. This is what Jeff told Clarence and Sumo as a scary story. Because of this, we understand that there are parallel worlds in Cartoon Network. In the Attack the Block Party episode, the kids were watching a movie about a visitor from space, and it was clear that it came from the Steven Universe show because of the diamond on his belly. Clarence was also influenced by Adventure Time, Gunter as a puppet, and even Finn and Jake. So it's clear Clarence is connected to different universes, especially the Over the Garden Wall cartoon. It's clear that the two worlds are connected because in the last episode of Over the Garden Wall, the drive through car wash and bowling arcade from Clarence appeared. The only thing that didn't appear was the hospital where work woke up after coming out of the unknown. The worlds are almost identical, but not quite a hundred percent. The most important common detail was the tree from Clarence that had a human face and talked to the kids that climbed it. It looked like the tree from over the garden wall that was created with the children's souls who were lost forever in the unknown. In one episode, when Clarence went to the forest at night, you could notice the shadow of Wirt and Greg from over the garden wall moving and going their own way. Now let's talk about Balance. He was first introduced to the class as a new classmate. He was rude, bad, and had an amputated hand. Clarence then told him that they look alike, which is true, but Balance didn't quite like that and threatened Clarence, but Clarence didn't think that it was serious. Clarence then proceeded to get information about Balance, thinking he was a good friend, only to discover that Balance was evil and an adult who tried to hurt others. So he collaborated with Belson to stop him by telling the teachers but Balance controlled Clarence and the teacher's minds. He also revealed that he came from the freaking underworld. Luckily, Rodrigo, the ringmaster, caught Balance and imprisoned him in a wagon and took him back to where he came from. The theory says the characters of Over the Garden Wall sneaked into Clarence, and that's why there is a big resemblance between Chad and Rodrigo. There are also mysteries in the cartoon, like in the Dreams episode, when Mary went to the reading club and asked Clarence to close the garage after he finishes playing. After he was done playing, he went to watch TV and dozed off, forgetting all about the garage. The show on the TV was about the mind's complexity and dream interpretation. He then started having the same dream over and over until he saw a kid who looked like him sitting on the couch. He asked him about who he was, and the kid answered that his name was Jeremy. Clarence treated him like a brother, and they enjoyed their time together. When Jeremy wanted it to stop, Clarence told him that they were in a dream and that he was trying to convince his body to close the garage because he had to by sending mind signals to it so that he could stay inside the dream with Jeremy and not wake up. Clarence woke up right when he was closing the garage and Mary caught him and asked him about it so he told her about his dream and the kid who didn't let him close the garage. Now, the theory is that the kid was Clarence's dead brother Jeremy and here's why. 1. Jeremy's shoe size is 2. 
And according to Google, size 2 in shoe belongs to a 6-month-old baby, which means that the kid died at around the age of 7 months old. But how did he die? To answer this question, this will go back to the dream where the garage was not closed, which means the kid went out of it crawling and got hit by a car and died. The car in the dream was also a sign of the accident. This is all theory and assumptions though. Number 2. In The Balance episode, Balance wanted to attack Clarence with one of his memories from Clarence's unconsciousness. The burning accident. The most traumatizing thing that has ever happened to Clarence. When he was surrounded by fire, they killed his 7-month-old brother. Clarence obviously doesn't remember that. Anyways, Balance was trying to get revenge from Clarence through Jeremy after he was thrown into the dark unknown. This place was in the world of Over the Garden Wall, which explains the scene where Balance was telling a story to Jeremy who was in the crib. So, while Jeremy dreams, he noticed a hidden memory inside of Clarence's unconsciousness about the burning accident of the past, and the reason why Jeremy's soul was in the unknown was that he didn't want Clarence to forget about him. After a while, Jeremy and Balance show up together in the A Nightmare on Addledale Street episode, and again, it was about Balance's revenge of Clarence. Clarence ate a lot of candy, fell asleep, and started dreaming. It's here where Balance tried to kidnap him and his friends, while Jeremy tried to save him by helping him control his dream before Balance achieved his goal. At the end, Clarence got everyone out of Balance's prison, which was inside of him. Clarence got healed of his past trauma after defeating the bad guy. Now let's talk about Gilbin. His relationship with the others got better. He learned carving and worked on his skills to the point where he hastened the plant's growth using just his mind. Jeff had a secret that he was ashamed of, which is having six toes on his foot, which he also told Clarence about. Clarence promised not to tell anyone, but ended up revealing the secret to the whole school. Luckily, everyone accepted him and acknowledged their flaws. Chad and Mary gift Clarence his dream bicycle on his 10th birthday. Sumo earned his father's respect and trusted his capacities. After getting the bicycle, Clarence used to pass by Sumo so that they could go to school together. On the beginning of the new school year, Miss Baker announced that three students would be transferred to another school and Sumo was one of them. Jeff felt jealous because that other school was better. Clarence felt confused because he would not see one of his best friends anymore. Sumo transferred, but they all agreed to meet after school and play together. Chad played with the band that he abandoned eight years ago for the last time, Mary met Damien, her long-lost love for the last time as well, and learned that he found his real love and that he's no longer a womanizer. In one of the episodes, the theme was about growing up because it was about Gilbin's mustache. Clarence started to feel uneasy because he felt like being a kid is not permanent and he had to grow up, but they eventually accept the idea. Now, in the final episode called Anywhere But Sumo, two days away from summer vacation, Sumo, Jeff, and Clarence found an old couch in the garbage and they sit on it, except for Jeff because of his germ obsession. Clarence then remembered the annual anniversary of when they first met, when Sumo chopped off his own hair, and they wanted to do it again because his hair grew longer. Clarence went to get the trimmer from his mother, but when he came back, someone else had already cut Sumo's hair, so he considered it a betrayal and felt disheartened. On the last day of school, while everyone was happy and crying at their little goodbye party, Clarence goes back to the dirty couch and cut the last bit of hair on Sumo's head, and then Jeff sits with them. In this scene, the school gets destroyed and a new one gets built. Also, Miss Baker and Mr. Bernstein get caught making out in the class. Okay, and now with the last secret of Clarence. In the episode number 5 of the second season under the name of Plain Excited, Dillis, the grandma, died and Mary took a flight to the funeral. Clarence didn't feel sad at all because he hated her, and Chad was paranoid of flying because it was his first time. They ended up in the cockpit and the captain let them drive, then suddenly a bird hit the glass so they started to panic and press every button. The plane started falling and it probably crashed. Something is telling me that they all died in the plane crash, but I'm not sure. We can probably guess what happened to Clarence, Mary, and Chad, so let's go back to episode 24 of the first season, Pilot Expensing, where we saw the characters at a nursing home where they were talking about how they met 88 years ago. Sumo mentioned that they met at the Knight's Chicken Restaurant, but Jeff corrected him saying that they didn't meet there. And although they apparently had Alzheimer's, Clarence remembers well that he shaved Sumo's hair, because if you look closely, you would notice that Clarence has no legs. 
which implies he was injured in the plane crash. The others also don't have legs, which leaves one assumption, that they lost them because they're old. But still, in episode 18 of the first season, and in a scene to the future, we saw that Jeff and Sumo had their legs, unlike Clarence. Well, this is the reel of the show. I hope you liked the video, and we'll see you next time.